Hello and welcome to the Coors Event Center. I am Matt Smith for 5280 Sports Network. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, the slide is over as Colorado men's basketball ends their seven-game losing streak tonight with a win over the other team. They were tied for last place in the Pac-12 with tonight in Oregon State. Oregon State, arguably the worst Power 5 team in the country. Tonight comes in the Coors Event Center and hangs 78 points on the buffs. It is their highest point total since December 11th against Savannah State. This is a Colorado basketball team that was in desperate need of a win and they got one tonight, but it wasn't in the fashion that some may have expected it as at the beginning of this game to send a message to his starters. Tad Boyle benched uh, his starting five for for this one and it was uh, a move that was somewhat overreacted to by fans but really uh, Tad after the game saying that he wanted to give the guys who hadn't gotten a chance an opportunity to come out show themselves and maybe get some of these younger guys confidence moving forward so as we get on here in the latter part of the season they can step up and contribute and we did see that tonight Bryce Peters the freshman guard came out and had his best career game so far without question the energy that Bryce competed with tonight was extremely essential uh, for this team provided a really good spark plug played 24 minutes 23 minutes I believe in this one which was really good to see uh, Bryce stepping in and stepping up and a lot of what we saw from him tonight was what I saw from him beginning a camp somebody could get downhill put pressure on opposing defenses especially in the interior and on the defensive end compete his tail off which is exactly what he did in fact uh, Tad Boyle talks about it's not really who starts but who finishes the game quite often and tonight Bryce Peters was the one who finished this game defending Stevie Thompson of Oregon State. Thompson and Eubanks tonight with big big games for the Beavers but Bryce Peters was the one for the most part. Derek White had that assignment a little bit there in the second half but Bryce Peters really brought that home. I was very impressed. He grew up tonight. Uh, he, he started I think he brought a confidence that this team needed and it was good to see. It was the first win in 35 days for the University of Colorado. Uh, Akia Zeely uh, Deleon Brown, Tory Miller, and Lucas Seward also got the start for Colorado tonight. And they did a pretty good job. Got out to a 12 to 10 jump there uh, at the outset in this game. Buffs would only lead by one at halftime again, 41 to 40. And then you really had to start thinking to yourself, well, are they really going to lose to Oregon State at home? But credit Colorado for making the plays and getting the stops that they needed to down the stretch. Oregon State cut this to a two-point game, 72 to 70, with 4:06 left to play. And then Colorado would go on an 8-0 run, get a couple of crucial stops back to back and pretty much closed this one out in a good second half performance. And one of the second half stars that I feel like I need to give some credit to is Dom Collier. Now Dom had 10 points in 14 minutes tonight, but it wasn't offensively that was impressive, at least in my opinion, from Dom tonight. Defensively, three steals in that second half really turned the table about midway through that second period of play. And, and, and what you liked from Dom was the experience finally showed up. And you could see he was one of the upperclassmen that finally dug their heels in the ground and said enough is enough because somebody needed to I definitely think he had a large part to do with that and you know the guy who really hasn't seen a ton of playing time this year and got a do not uh, did not play coach's decision at DNP CD for the first time in his career just a few games ago was Thomas Akiazili who had six tur uh, excuse me six assists and no turnovers in this one buffs got pretty good play from their point guards and their offense as a result I thought flowed very well I thought that there was good motion against the 2 3 zone of of the Oregon State Beavers. In fact, what was it, 18 assists on 29 made field goals for Colorado. Now Colorado in this game shoots, what, 50% from the field, 54% from three. But the concerning part, and it seems to always be something with this team, is they shot 48% from the free throw line tonight, which could not get it done. Now in the second half, uh, the Buffs really tried to press. They used a 1-2-2 token press a few times, and then I believe a full court trap, a bit of a man, to, man look to start, trying to trap in the corners there. Uh, in the first half at parts in the second half but Tad after the game saying they actually tried to do that more but because they were so inefficient from the free throw line making one of two they couldn't get that set up after a made basket so Oregon State hung in this one a little bit Stevie Thompson like I said and Drew Eubanks uh, were terrific they had 53 combined points on 20 of 29 shooting rest of the team just 25 points uh, Oregon State came in here a little bit hampered with Tress Trinkle out uh, Tress 
Pinkle, rather, I should say, out in this game. And, uh, you know, a 4 and 17 start now for Oregon State, 0 and 8 in conference. Really, really not good this season. Uh, they are injured, but Colorado got a win over one of the worst teams in Power 5 Division 1 basketball. And you definitely take a win. A win is a win no matter who it comes against. That is certainly true, especially in conference play, and especially when you're on a seven-game conference, uh, conference play losing streak off the worst start, uh, conference start in the better part of 24 years. Well, it, it, it's, it's a really tough spot Colorado is in because on Saturday at 7.30 p.m., it's the Oregon Ducks who rolls into town. Now, they're ranked number 10 in the country. They are playing tonight, actually, as we speak. They are on the road in Salt Lake City in a bit of a tight ball game in the first half against the Utes. I would expect them to come out with that. Oregon is extremely good, tied for first atop the Pac-12 conference with Arizona. This is a Buffs team that needed to win, and they got one. But the key element to this moving forward is consistency. And again, it's uh, what we've talked about for the better part of the entire season. They've got to be able to step it up and compete defensively. Now, the truth is, and Tad Boyle alluded to it after the game, in fact, he said it flat out, that if Colorado defended the way that they did tonight on Saturday, Oregon's going to score 120 points on them. And it's probably true, but what I'm most concerned about with that Oregon game is Oregon's defense. Jordan Bell and Chris Boucher are extreme threats uh, with interior defense, and that's got to be a concern because if Colorado's not going to put pressure on, on them with their big men, which tonight, uh, the really outside of the defense, the one drawback to this game was Wes Gordon. 0 of 1 uh, in this game, again, just one shot attempt, one rebound in 15 minutes for Wesley Gordon just 15 minutes of game time. Now, with that being said, you cannot have that performance against Oregon if Colorado even wants to compete in that game, let alone win the game. The Buffaloes played very well tonight, but as Tad Boyle says, you never get too drunk on your own wine. And I don't really know how you could after the first win in your first eight games coming now on January, what was it, 26th today? Uh, it, it was a good game tonight for Colorado to get things back on track. They were better on, in all regards. They did allow Oregon State, what, 59% from the field in the first half. Oregon State finishes 54% uh, from the field in this game. You cannot do that against Oregon and expect to win. However, things started to go in Colorado's direction. They had 26 points off of 14 Oregon State turnovers. They only turned the ball over seven times themselves. They took care of the basketball, and they got stops when they needed to. And I talked to Tad Boyle in practice this week, and he said, really, the only difference between us being 4-3 and three and 0-7 oh and is four defensive stops. They got defensive stops down the stretch tonight when it mattered, and we'll see if they can do that against Oregon. They're certainly going to have to compete much better from the tip. I am Matt Smith from the Coors Event Center. Thank you very much for tuning in. Go online and follow our family of podcasts at 5280sportsnetwork.com, and you can follow along on Twitter at RealMattSmith. That's Matt with one T, or at 5280sportsnet. We will see you on Saturday for Oregon.